The chair calls next Jennifer Ziegler. Please state your name, who you're with, and yes. your position on the bill. I'm Jennifer Ziegler, and I'm here. Um, thank you for having me. Can't say uh, Chairman Price, <laughs> but um, I'm here representing myself. I'm in favor of HB 810. And I'm also representing a large patient group, Patients for Stem Cells, um, represent, representing uh, thousands of patients who are, have either had adult stem cell treatment who, or who are considering having adult stem cell treatment. So um, my journey began, um, I, it was 2004, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, I was a young mother, I had uh, children in middle school, and um, got, uh, got the rug ripped out from under me basically and uh, went the normal path with a neurologist and got on a maintenance drug and injected for five years. My body uh, began to reject that drug and I was told that I was unable to take some of the other maintenance drugs because I could die from PPML which is a brain infection. So I really at that point in time didn't have any other maintenance drugs to try. So. Um, being told that, I'm like, well, what do I do next? Well, I served uh, three sessions on the Government Relations Committee here for the MS Society. So I was down here at the Capitol for three sessions and hooked up with uh, Preston and Tracy and, and Representative Hardcastle, and we were all down here for a number of time, and they had all been treated. And I kept thinking to myself, you know, I think I'm going to do that someday. I think that is my future, that I'm going to seek adult stem cell treatment. And so um, in 2012, that's exactly what I did. Um, I was one of the patients uh, down in Houston that was cut off from therapy um, in the middle of my therapy. In fact, I had received one treatment with 200 million of my own adult stem cells and Chairman Hardcastle called me on my, on my ride home. I, I live in Dripping Springs and he said, that's it for you. There's not going to be any more treatments for you. And I was scheduled two more consecutive Fridays in a row to go and was one of about three patients that the FDA cut my therapy off in the middle. I'd already received one treatment. So I was really disheartened with that and reached out to the FDA numerous times and pretty much got to talk to the hand on that one. Um, I've actually received uh, stem cells for an ACL injury in Southlake in in Dallas, um, out, well, outside Fort Worth. Um, I had a skiing accident and uh, went in for an ACL repair at the Reardon McKenna Institute and got my ACL repaired. Um, I'm 52 years old and that's not an injury that's gonna heal on its own. And so um, I was actually hiking, biking, and walking six weeks later, which is pretty crazy. And then within five to six months, I was actually skiing again and felt stronger than ever on my knee. So that was great. Then uh, just this past December, uh, Tracy Thompson and I flew back down to Panama and I received a second treatment for MS. Um, I've gotten relief from heat intolerance, uh, chronic fatigue, um, bladder issues. Unfortunately, a lot of chronically ill patients, that's that's a big improvement if you can get improvement on bladder issues, let me tell you. Um, but got improvement on five different symptoms that, you know, my maintenance drug, I would not have gotten improvement on any of those. Um, so I'm kind of a unique patient because I have gotten multiple types of stem cells, and that's kind of cool, um, for orthopedic and for a chronic illness. Um, we realize, patients realize that it's not a cure, but it's the only thing that we've really seen a stop in progression for some patients. And it offers regeneration and repair where there was none before. So in 2012, I was a founding member of a group called Patients for Stem Cells. And this kind of uh, spawned from the fact that there were a number of patients cut off from treatment here in the United States. Um, so the procedure that I got in Panama could have easily been done in my doctor's office in up in South Lake. I could have easily had that done in Dr. Reardon's office and not had to fly to Panama. Not that Panama is not a wonderful, beautiful place to visit, but um, it, it's just so much easier to have it done here. Yeah. Um, 
you know, when your doctor tells you that there's nothing left mm -hmm. that they can do for you and your maintenance drugs, yeah. You could try to wrap it up. Right oh, now. sure. Of Thank course. Um, so in conclusion, I just feel like my, me my medical liberties have been violated if I don't have the opportunity to be treated here. Um, and I'm standing here before you just as a walking, talking version of I'm a stem cell success story. And I've heard so many patients here today telling you the same thing. And just the opportunity that we're going to miss out on if we don't allow chronically ill patients to be treated here in Texas. So thank you. I appreciate your time and your effort. And God bless all of you. Thank you. Thanks. Members, any questions for this witness? Thank you for your time. Uh-huh.